Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Andrea Riposati. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Dante Genomics. Uh, so before talking about Dante Genomics or about genomics in general, I want to tell you about Angela. Angela was born 25 years ago with an undiagnosed genetic disease. And for 25 years, she took the traditional approach to healthcare. So she saw doctors, she went to hospitals. In some of those hospitals, she also took uh, her blood sample to run a genetic test that analyzes few genes at a time. But for 25 years, Angela did not receive a precise diagnosis. So Angela needed help. Angela found a doctor who is a Dante Genomics customer and who took a completely different approach to Angela's case. So he sequenced her full genome, her entire DNA, with the Dante Genome Solution. And after sequencing her entire DNA, he was able to generate personalized reports based on her medical history. And so after 25 years, Angela finally found her precise diagnosis, and she also found uh, the type of drugs that she, was, that she uh, was intolerant to. And so the doctor was able to create a personalized clinical pathway, and so now finally Angela is living a normal life. And this is a story about the power of the genome. This is a story about how today the genome can really transform healthcare and going from a traditional approach where we go to the doctor when we are sick and the doctor has to rely on technologies that are tens of years old to a new approach where you can go to the doctor before you get sick and the doctor can get access right away to the newest technologies and the newest innovations in science and healthcare. Now, the genome is your entire DNA. Uh, today, if you go to most hospitals, there is still the old approach of analyzing few genes at a time. Uh, for instance, the government of Italy and the government of Spain in 2019 and 2020 introduced BRCA1, BRCA2 test, uh, which is a very important test that measures and identifies the risk of developing breast cancer for women. Now, this technology was invented in 1995. In Europe, we the healthcare systems are giving access to this technology in 2020. So in these 25 years, can you imagine how many lives could have been saved if this, if this technology was already accessible? Now, the beauty of the genome, and so the future where we are going to, the beauty of the genome that it, com it completely changes the paradigm. So the genome is your entire DNA, which is simple. Now, the complexity of the genome is that it's so much bigger than anything else that is done with genetics. So in terms of data, your entire DNA, the genome, is 10,000 times bigger than the data that you generate when you measure your BRCA1, BRCA2, or when you get a traditional genetic test. Which means that in terms of algorithms, in terms of software, you need a software that is 10,000 times more powerful, more robust, and faster than the software used in traditional genetic tests. And data is important also because, so if you think about you know, your common experience in a lab is that you go to the doctor, you collect your sample, you send the sample to the lab, and then uh, that sample gets analyzed and you get a diagnosis. So the core job usually is done by the lab. Now with the genome is different. Because so in order to analyze the genome, and it's called sequencing, so in order to sequence your genome, you need to buy a machine which costs about $1 million. So let's say everyone with $1 million can sequence your genome, but the output of that machine is not a diagnosis, is not an interpretation, is not a report, is raw data. And it's gigabytes and gigabytes, it's about 90 gigabytes of raw data, which is really a big, big text file with letters and coordinates of your DNA. So this is not a diagnosis, this is not something that you can give to a doctor, to a patient, even to a specialist. It's a huge text file where you need bioinformaticians, you need a team of bioinformaticians, or you need a very powerful software in order to interpret it and in order to provide a patient with a personalized diagnosis and interpretation. And that's why with the genome, with this new different approach, the paradigm really shifts from the lab to the tech. So from the lab to the data and to the software. And the, the paradigm is also a paradigm shift for the patient because like in Angela's case, you get access to your entire DNA. 
So you get access to a digital copy of your DNA, and then you can query it. Now, that changed also for the doctor, because let's think about the doctor, right? Like in Angela's case, so you go to the doctor, usually you know, the doctor collects your sample, sends the sample to the lab, then you go back after a couple of weeks, the results are ready, and the doctor gives you an answer. Now, with the if you had sequenced your genome already, so if you already have this digital copy of your DNA, what happens is that when you, when you, are at, when you see the doctor, if that doctor can access the digital copy of your DNA with a software that can run interpretation live in just a couple of minutes, that doctor can provide you with diagnosis on your new genetic condition or your, your medical questions right away, which means that that completely changes the way doctors can approach healthcare. That extremely reduces the time that you as a patient have to wait to, to receive a diagnosis from that doctor. Uh, we are seeing now cases of countries of hospitals running whole genome sequencing on children, which means that those children will have impact and will have access in their life to completely change, completely different type of healthcare. So already these children, and it's important when you sequence the genome of children to provide results in 30 days, because there are very strong genetic conditions that if you are able to jump in in the first 30 days of the life of those children, you can cure those children, you can provide the treatment and avoid as those children get sick. Now, as those children grow, when they grow, they also get access to prevention. Uh, they can receive uh, what's called the pharmacogenomics report, which is a report that gives you information about the types of drugs and medicines where you will develop an adverse reaction to, or drugs and medicine that don't work for you. Uh, those children, when they decide to have a family, they can do family planning and see what types of genetic variants and conditions they may give to their kids. Uh, also, when they get a little bit older, they can, uh, for instance, you know, let's say our age, they can find out if they are predisposed to uh, colorectal cancer, so predisposed to other diseases. Uh, when they get a little bit older again, then we can get information about Alzheimer's. So in their entire life, any time they have a question about wellness, longevity, health, even nutrition, they can use and leverage their genome to have a more personalized and more empowered experience and to really improve their lives. Also, the types of information that we provide to these patients, to these kids, needs to change in their life and depending on the question they have. Now, because they're kids, of course, when they're born, we, for instance, we run a pediatric report. So it's a report on pediatric diseases. Now, when I sequence my genome, it doesn't make sense for me to receive a pediatric report because either I have developed those diseases or I have not. So that belongs to the past. Now, similarly, for those kids, it's quite useless to run a report on the predisposition for Alzheimer's disease because by the time those kids get 70 or 80, probably we, they will have, you know, we will have a cure and a treatment for Alzheimer's. Uh, now, in my case, today probably I should and I did run a report on uh, colorectal cancer. Uh, but beyond that, I was also able to understand what types of diagnosis, what type of diseases I'm more at risk at. So, for instance, in my family, uh, a lot of people have diabetes. And so when I grew up, the wisdom in the family was that you know, we should be really, really careful about cookies. Uh, then, by sequencing my genome, I discovered that I do not have a predisposition to diabetes. Uh, but I discovered, so I can eat cookies, and I can eat sweets and sugar, but I discovered that I need to be careful with some types of meat, and then, then I need to combine some types of meats with some vegetables to reduce the iron in my blood, uh, which, as far as I knew, I'm the first person in my family. So this is just a light example on how I was able to impact my life, impact my daily habits by sequencing my genome uh, and just you know, look at what type of food I should eat. And then on other situations, I also discovered that aspirin doesn't work for me. Uh, but also now, when I go to the doctor uh, and let's say I have a question about my cardiovascular activity, I can also provide the doctor with a cardiovascular report on my heart conditions and my genetic risk for heart conditions and also on drugs that I should avoid if I don't want to accelerate my cardiovascular activity. And so now, every time I see a doctor, uh, either for prevention or because I'm sick, I can empower the doctor to take a better choice, to make a better choice, and to have more information to, to drive me. 
Now, so I talk about the genome and how this genome being your DNA, being the code that is really like the human code of our body is really the base where we can really, that we can leverage to empower medicine and healthcare. Uh, now, before the problem with the, the DNA was that sequencing was very expensive. Uh, Steve Jobs paid $100,000 to sequence his genome just a couple of years before his death. Uh, even a few years ago, sequencing the genome still cost $10,000, $20,000. Today, that cost of sequencing, which is the cost in the wet lab, went down dramatically. And so the new bottleneck is really the interpretation, especially when you, see, when you have the genome, and with the genome, it's so much data that you need to interpret that data, do it in a scalable way, uh, and then provide the reports that are personalized, that are meaningful for that patient, for the specific question that that patient has that day. And so that's why software and technology are becoming more and more important uh, in, uh, in genetics. And that's why those are really the areas where we need to invest in order to provide uh, accessible and preventative healthcare for people all over the world. So I will close with another story about the patient. That's the story about Jennifer. Uh, and so Jennifer sequenced her genome with us because she was curious. So she didn't have any disease, she didn't have any conditions in running in her family. She was just an early adopter. And then after about 18 months, Jennifer was actually diagnosed with breast cancer, even if she was not predisposed to breast cancer. And so at the hospital, Jennifer told her doctor that she had sequenced her genome. And so the doctor asked Jennifer for a pharmacogenomics report. And on that report, the doctor, first of all, Jennifer was able to generate that report in just two minutes with her phone, because we already had the digital copy of her DNA. But more importantly, on that report, the doctor found out that Jennifer would have had an adverse reaction to the number one chemotherapy drug in the United States. So the doctor removed the drug from her treatment, chose a different drug, changed the dosage, because Jennifer is a fast metabolizer, and so by sequencing her genome early on, Jennifer was able to avoid six months of horrible side effects and defeat cancer. So this is the power of the genome. Uh, it's true for Jennifer, it's true for Angela, and can be true for a lot of people. I think as individuals, as private organizations, we need to push for this adoption of genomics in healthcare. Uh, we should not wait for governments, uh, because as in the case of BRCA1, BRCA2 tests, it may take 25 years. Uh, with internet, internet was not pushed by governments, was pushed by companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google, that created applications for the internet to be used. And that's the same that we can do uh, with genomics. To change, in health, to change healthcare all over the world, taking an approach from tech, from tech and from software. Thank you.